Well, chronologically, we're going through the Bible and we're now in the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, the early church. And we're going to be making lots of deviations from the book of Acts to look at Paul's writings as he's making his travelings in the book of Acts. Uh, nevertheless, we're in Acts chapter 2. And you remember that uh, the Holy Spirit has come. Uh, the disciples and perhaps uh, as many as 120 believers have been speaking in known tongues. Uh, that is, every person that hears them, hears them in their own language. And uh, we see that this is not a model for a second blessing. It's not a model for a prayer language, but rather it's a once in a lifetime experience. Don't find it any place else in scripture. Uh, and look at the elements of it and you will not find another place in scripture that has the same elements. In any case, uh, we have uh, with the accusation that as these men are speaking in known tongues uh, that they're glorifying God but some are saying uh, that they're drunk and so Peter stands up in chapter 2 beginning at verse 14 but Peter taking his stand with the eleven raised his voice and declared to them men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem let this be known to you and give heed to my voice for these men are not drunk as you suppose for it is only the third hour that's 9 a.m. it's only the third hour of the day but this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel now one of the things that we need to be sure that we understand is that prophecy is always fulfilled sometimes in a very short time, sometimes in a medium time, and sometimes it is yet to come. Nevertheless, uh, here Peter clearly says this was spoken of by the prophet Joel, and it says as we continue in verse 17, and it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams even on my bond slaves both men and women I will in those days pour forth of my spirit and they shall prophesy now I want to stop there for a moment because I think it's very important that you understand last days and end times End times are the days preceding very closely to the second coming of Christ. But last days is a much broader time frame. And as often with prophets, they saw not only short-term things, but they saw long-term things. And often mixed them together so that they were just seeing mountaintops of things that were to come. That's why this passage can be so very, very difficult to understand because we see a prophesying here, but there's some signs that are yet to be spoken about here that Peter's saying that are longer term, that is, they're further out. So let's continue uh, as we look at verse uh, 29 and following. And I will grant wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, and the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. And you can see the longer term other than just prophesying. And it shall be that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Those words may sound very familiar to you because uh, whenever you do the Roman road, uh, that's usually one of the passages of Scripture. So the book of Romans, written by Paul, uh, is quoted, uh, <laughs> quoting uh, not only the book of Acts, but quoting Joel. And so we see a very great promise. And that great promise is that anyone who believes in the name of the Lord Jesus, that is, actually believes that he was who he said he was and can do what he said he could do will be saved now remember Peter is defending the men who have been prophesying they're not drunk 
second he says just use your heads it's only 9 a.m. in the morning and nobody gets drunk that early um, certainly not these disciples and then the third and most important thing for you to remember from this section of scripture is that those who trust and believe in Jesus will be saved not might be not could be but those who truly believe in Jesus who he was what he said he did and what he did to prove it you got to believe all of that and if you do you're going to try to live like Jesus and you're going to profess him and witness on his behalf and that's my thought for the day God bless you and have a great day Sin is anything that's displeasing to God. All of us are guilty. There's written, there's none that is righteous, not even one. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, we shall be saved. For with a mouth man confesses, and with a heart he believes. And whoever believes and calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved.